Business in the front, WTF around back. Pocket now reviewed the Galaxy S4 Zoom back in the summer, shortly after it was unveiled at Samsung's premier 2013 event in London, and the task of reviewing it fell to the same man who'd just gone hands-on with the unit, our own Anton Di Nodge. He proclaimed it a camera with a phone slapped on it, and said, if you decide to go with the Galaxy S4 Zoom, you won't be disappointed. I agree with half of that, and it's not the last half. This is Pocket Now, I'm Michael Fisher, and this is my review rebuttal for the Samsung Galaxy S4 Zoom. As a reminder, the review rebuttal is not a rejection or a revision of Pocket Now's official review stance, but a second look at a device meant to give added perspective. Sometimes these take the form of editorials, and other times they're videos. Check out Jaime Rivera's review rebuttal for the LG G2 at Pocket Now, and follow us at all the usual squawk boxes so you don't miss future installments. The Galaxy S4 Zoom was launched on AT&T in the United States less than a week ago, and when it arrived at our office, it immediately conjured memories of our experimental weekend using the Samsung Galaxy camera as a daily driver much earlier this year. That's not a good thing. And sadly, it's mostly due to the form factor. AT&T says the Galaxy S4 Zoom has the best qualities of the Galaxy S4 smartphone series combined with the best of a compact point-and-shoot camera. But that's not true, because one of the standout positives of the Galaxy S4 is that it's light and thin. At 280 grams and 27 millimeters thick, the Zoom is neither. That's fine for a point-and-shoot, but it's unforgivably clunky for something sold under the Galaxy S4 smartphone brand. It's very big, even for a pocket. It's awkward to talk on as a phone. And it's cumbersome to handle while texting or browsing, especially when the camera hardware fires up erroneously, as it sometimes does, and deploys the Canon-like zoom lens right between your fingers. There are ways of tacking a big camera onto a smartphone without venturing into absurdity like this. Nokia's Lumia 1020 is a solid example. The Lumia may be a little on the ugly side, but next to the Zoom, it's a beauty queen. Of course, an aesthetic cost is the price you pay for a really great camera, right? Well, yes. The Zoom is aptly named. Its resolution is a fairly standard 16 megapixels, but the big deal is the big lens, which is capable of 10 times optical zoom, with hardware stabilization for steady shooting. That's a huge deal, and it means you can have a lot of fun picking out small details in faraway scenes with this device. It even performs reasonably well in low light, with Samsung's typical bevy of software options to meet the needs of almost any situation, including a dedicated mode for food photography, if you really want to be insufferable in public. If picture-taking is your all-time number one obsession, and you absolutely don't want to carry a camera in addition to your smartphone, then the Galaxy S4 Zoom is totally worth your $549 off contract, or $199 on a two-year. Totally. Unless, that is, you look at all the compromise that's gone into making this thing. Anton put it best in his original review. This thing isn't a Galaxy S4. It's an S4 Mini mated to a Galaxy camera. The screen is QHD, the processor a lower power Exynos backed up by a smaller than usual amount of RAM, and the Android build is, despite its jelly bean underpinnings, pretty laggy at times, thanks to that middling hardware. And the things that look at first like conveniences often turn out to be nuisances, like the ring control you're accidentally bumping all the time, or half-baked, like the shutter button that can't even bypass the lock screen to quickly launch the camera. So you're left with a device that takes good photos and delivers optical zoom that you can't find anywhere else, but which is uncomfortable and generally irritating to use for every other function. Broadly speaking, that's not a great trade-off. For the price AT&T is asking, you could get an iPhone 5S, a Nokia Lumia 1020, or a real Galaxy S4, all of which deliver a superior smartphone experience and comparable photo quality in most cases. Yeah, you'll be missing out on the fancier optical stuff, but 
you're also not being forced to deal with the downsides of a camera masquerading as a smartphone, which is what the Zoom is. I hate criticizing new hardware. Sometimes it seems all we do is complain that the modern smartphone landscape is nothing but an endless parade of featureless slabs. So part of me feels compelled to automatically embrace a bold move like this. But it's not enough to be bold. The product also has to make sense. And the Galaxy S4 Zoom doesn't. Unless you're going to use it as a dedicated vacation phone you can swap your SIM into for excursions, the Zoom doesn't get enough right, in my view, to justify its existence. I stand behind Anton's review on the whole, but given the chance, I'd give this device a much lower score. Of course, I don't really care about numeric scores as a reader. I much prefer the content of a review, but I know a lot of you out there disagree with me. So drop us a line down in the comments. Let us know what you would have scored the Galaxy S4 Zoom numerically or otherwise if you were given the chance to review it. And after that, be sure and check out Anton's original review of the device, which includes some awesome photos from Romania. That's here on YouTube and at pocketnow.com. But before you go anywhere, please drop us a like if you did enjoy the video and stay tuned for a lot more from Pocket Now. Until next time, this has been Michael Fisher. Thank you for watching and we'll see you soon.